everybody this evening to pray for nervous. <coughs> pray, Lord, just have his way here. Let's pray for Brother Terry as he comes. Pray for Jay and you as they go downstairs. Most of all, do pray for the lost. Thank you, Terry. Pray for opportunity to serve the Lord, so maybe somebody has a song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord this evening. Hearts and minds are clear. Riley, you want to sing?
Good job. Amen. Anybody else that I got something on your heart? Maybe a word or a testimony? Hearts and minds is clear. This is our Wednesday night Bible study, so uh, we always open up with altar prayer. So before we do that, maybe somebody has a special object of prayer on your heart. It's good to be saved. Amen. Just making sure you're all still awake. Just making sure you get... I know Eddie said something about... Uh, Irene Main. Uh, really, Eddie, uh, he... Uh, had to leave, was going over to uh, Nancy's. That's Nancy's mom. She they, she just got home. They sent her home. Uh, what, and there's not much they can do for her. So you do be much in prayer for her. Anybody else tonight? Do remember, as we sent out this week, uh, Chris Lipford, or Chris uh, Pleasant. Pleasant. It was coming to me. Has anybody heard about him today? So I heard he was not doing well. So he's still... Uh, he was, to the best of my knowledge, he was coming up the three lane, a little Stony Creek, what we call a Stony Creek, and a uh, car hit him head on. So uh, you'd be much in prayer for him. Is he going down? He was going down, one hit him coming up. No, a deer ran out in front of him, he swerved and hit the other car. Okay. So he hit the other car. So he hit the other car. More details every day. So the main thing is he needs prayer. Uh, so you do be much in prayer for that. Anybody else? That JC, I guess he's home by now. Jace, yeah, Jace came home yesterday. He's still very sore, uh, doing doing good. I talked to text Matt this afternoon. He's doing a lot better. So, but still got a long ways to go. He uh, turned a side by side over and then there was some other kids in there with him and they fell down on top of him as well. Anybody else? My brother, Harley Rankin. Just remember this. Anybody else? Sandy Moorfield's on there, but pray for her daughter. She's Brooke, Brooke's her name. She's got terminal cancer. And she's just called the Jason's name. Let's remember this. Anybody else? Does anybody know what's wrong with Tommy Jack Shannon? Is he still in the nursing home or do anybody know? Not that I know of. I, I don't know anything about him, but don't, you, you don't see him down there? Or? Where we go, it may be in Elizabeth. Yeah. Somebody said it was down Elizabeth a while back, but I don't know. Yeah. He was in Elizabeth, and I don't know if he still is in there. Let's remember this. Anybody else tonight? If not, there's plenty on our prayer list to be in prayer, much in prayer about, so you can continue to pray for them, continue to pray for the work on the new building down here and all the things going on. Do ask you to remember Baylor and uh, Leanna. They both uh, had some ear infections this week and uh, got some things that uh, have been uh, going back with this old crud. I still bound it going on about three weeks, so you pray for us. Uh, who? Who? All the babies. Yeah. All three of the babies have had it, and the biggest baby of all still got it. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all continue to remember to pray for them as well. Anybody uh, that can and will, we'll gather around the altar and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Dear me, Father, we come to you again tonight, Lord, to some worship before thee. We thank you for another day and another opportunity for God to come out to worship and to serve you tonight. Lord, I pray, God, you'll help us to be the light that you would have us to be here at the church and, Lord, out in that community, Lord. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for all those that's on this prayer list, for Ralph Mink, Diane Eisenhower, Riley Allen, Aubrey Gregg, uh, Clifton and Adam, Kathy Woodard, Louise Markham, John Mary Bishop, Kevin Bernard, the Reason family, uh, the website request, uh, David Wilson, Carter Harris, Candy Greer, Ashley Wyatt, Paige Porter, Jalen Sutherland, Daniel Furtis, Danny McAlay, 
Mandy Fleming, Jerry Duggar, John Pope, Mitchie Watson, Bob Eggers, Billy Reese, <laughs> Melissa Taylor, Sandra Moorefield's family, her daughter Lord that has cancer, uh, Stafford Humphrey and wife, Chuck Moorefield and family, Chris Pleasant, Keith Harry, Andy Lowe, David Burnett, uh, Ryan, Mark Reynolds, Holly McFadden, uh, Brother Eddie's family, Ebenezer Christian Home, Brother Ross Dow, Cameron Sluder, Dennis and Hazel, uh, new building down here, God, and all that work, Daniel Buchanan, Cindy Wyatt, Lucas Perdue, Laura Tressler, Dale Phillips, Ben Bowers, Kenny Jane Head, Ed Ham, Brylan, uh, Justin Roark, Tyler Hampton, Craig Thompson, John and Amy and the boys, uh, Linda Simcox, Lynn and Caroline Courtner, Caroline Courtner, Daniel Jones and family, uh, Jace Button, uh, Lord uh, Irene Main, uh, David Ward, Aiden and family, pray for Melissa and all the, the doctor business and surgery, Lord, that she's going to have to have. God, we pray for Thomas Jack Sham, the adults, and the Northfield, Andrew Key, Elaine Kirby, Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis in the church, Brendan Morris, uh, Buffy Cornette, Chris Stoya, Wendell Carraway, Marie Jennings, Rick Stout, June Brady, Don and Kim Garrett, Frank Johnson, uh, Teresa McAuley, Margaret Eisenhower, uh, John Lowe, our church, John Yates, Samaritan's Purse, Justin Moran and the kids, Harold and Shirley Rash, Harley Rankin, God, and many others tonight, Lord, that we've probably forgotten about, but I know you have not. And Lord, those that we just read off, God, you know every burden, everything that's going on in their life. Some, Lord, need a healing. Some, God, need a restoring. Most of all, some of them might need even salvation, God. Whatever it is, I pray it will supply according to your will. And Lord, I pray for the reason of thy word tonight. You open to our minds, to our hearts, upstairs and down. God, you'll bless the hearts of those that hear. And God, help us as we speak. And we give you all the glory. Not our will be done, but thine in Jesus. Bless it, and we pray. Amen. Oh! Completely different things. Amen. 
our tithes is a, is a, what our obligation is kind of like our duty to, to, to the church, to the local church, to be able to help support the local church and, and the things that the local church does. Offerings are those things that are given from the heart above that which God has given you or that you are has God has impressed upon you to do. But in all those things, if we don't get nothing else said, if we don't get anything else understood out of these scriptures, let's understand this, that all tithing and offerings are is for a way for us to show our obedience unto the Lord. In other words, our service unto Him can come, comes through this. And if we are submissive in this, and I, that's one of the hardest things to turn loose up. It's one of the hardest things to get away of. I promise you, go and ask somebody around here and give you 20 bucks. I promise you, you'll find out how, how hard it is to get people to give you money. Hey, Amen. I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not just... Uh, being honest, it's just the way it is, and that's one of the things that we're very, we, we're, and not saying it's a bad thing, God told us to be good stewards, and, and we're to guard the things that we have, and we're, we're to look over those things, but God said it, we could be obedient in that, you know, we like to trust God with a lot of things, and uh, we say we want to trust God in everything, and that's one. This is one of the places that we can really trust God. To do, if we listen to Him and do the right thing, He will do the right thing. No doubt about it. it I promise you. Uh, you can invest in all kinds of things. You can pay it forward. You can do all kinds of things. You'll never get a higher return on your investment than investing in God and God's work and God's Amen. people. And we see here that Paul been talking to the church of Corinth. The church of Corinth had made a pledge to do something. They made a pledge in their heart. They felt led that God would have them to do a pretty large offering. Uh, and listen, you you could you know the Bible tells us in the book of Malachi that if you rob God in your tithes and your offerings. Um, and you can rob God all you want to. Uh, you, you you not pay your tithes and not give offerings or not give the way the Lord would have you to give, and you're not hurting anybody but yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll find out that the Lord will get His money and get His needs. That was, however, if you're try, if you're a saved child of God, the importance of tithing and offering is the as I said, the obedience of it. But it shows that you are willing to follow the Lord in everything that you do. If not, then you're robbing God and you're really robbing yourself of some great blessings. So, in verse number 8, the Bible says this, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, uh, may abound through every good work. Uh, listen, as we said the other day, it doesn't matter how large the gift is. Uh, the larger, in, in man's eyes, the larger the better. Amen. Uh, but God can take a little and make a lot out of it. Or it is the, you, he can take a lot and make a little out of it. Whatever the need is and whatever it is that you have that God has impressed upon you to do, give and do that. But he said here is all grace abound towards you. Uh, the, the, he always having all sufficiency and all things. We are God's children. We belong to the Lord, and the Lord is going to take care of His own. God will make sure that we have sufficiency. Uh, that's why He told, called us to be good stewards. That's why He called us to pay attention to the things that, uh, uh, over the church and even over our own in our own families in our own lives. It's good that we would be uh, good stewards of the uh, of the things that God's given us, not only in money but in our time and and all the other possessions and the things that God gives us that way as well. But it's very important for us to make sure that we manage our money and take care of those things very well. It, it, there's nothing worse than running out of money before the end of the month, is there? There's nothing in it. And listen, I, we talk a lot and been there a lot and lived it a lot as having more month than you do money. In other words, you run out and you're always struggling and always... You, most of I, I have found out in all those times that I had it hard. All the times that we have it, we struggle or we barely trying to get by, all those times, you know who put me there? Me, amen. 
It wasn't somebody else. It wasn't God's plan or God's dealing to get me there. But a lot of times, you know how they used to, how they used to say that your eyes are, are bigger than your stomach. You know, you kind of won't get all that food on your plate. A lot of times our eyes are bigger than our wallet. Say, did they man? I, we'll go out and we'll try to obtain things and buy things on good and well. We don't have the money for those things. It's very important to, that we manage well, but God said if you'll do it, if you'll manage well, and he said if, if you'll give to God and you do what God would have you to do, that don't mean just blow your money and throw it away on everything. Now, that means if you'll do what God tells you to do, that he'll make sure that you have enough that is sufficient for thee. I've told you many times, uh, <coughs> in times past, uh, you could figure our bills and figure out how much money was coming in, how much money was going out, and you'd just scratch your head. Amen? I, but I promise you, if you do what God would have you to do, He'll always make enough. He said over in the book of Mark, chapter number 9, verse 41, He said, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, and verily I say unto you, he will not lose his reward. Now, the things that we do for God, we re will receive a reward for that. If you're looking for a reward, you're looking for an Adam boy. The Bible tells us over in the book of Matthew, um, he said, He that does his alms before men has received his reward. Yes, in other words, if you're going out there and you're doing good work, so you're giving money just so people see you or, or just so somebody else saw you, that, and they thought, Well, boy, that's, that's nice of them. What? There's your reward. But the Bible tells us if we do our alms or we do our works and we do our giving in secret, then God will reward us openly. Amen? Uh, we do it not to be seen or not to be heard or, or not to make light on us, but just because God wanted us to give. Uh, he said he won't lose his reward. Uh, it'll be there for him. Uh, gifts don't have to be large. It just has to be freely given. Uh, it just has to be given from the right and a cheerful heart, as we've already heard. Uh, and we know that a believer can generously and wisely give things in the way that God would have them to. And if they'll do that, they're always, they will always have enough. Amen? Now, you remember the story of, of Elijah there on the back side when he was over there in the middle of the drought. And the Lord told him to go down there. There'd be a little old widow woman down there that'd be able to take care of him. That little old widow woman that was down there, all she had was enough oil in the cruise and enough flour in the barrel just to make one little cake. And she decided that she was going to go out. She was tired of the drought. She was tired of all the things going on. And she decided she was going to go out. She was going to cut some bark off an old tree that was known to be able to kill you and be able to poison you enough to put you just die in your sleep and go right on. She went out there to do that that day to take that flower, mix that bark in with that flower to kill her and her son, to commit suicide there that day. But Elijah, God sent Elijah down there and he told him uh, that there would be a woman there. Right. And he saw that woman, the woman saw Elijah, and Elijah said, told her what was the, the, to go prepare a cake for the man of God. And she said, I ain't got but one. I ain't got enough but just for me and my son, and that's it. He said, look, if you'll go on, it'll sustain me. See, so you know what she did? She trusted God. Amen. I don't know if we really get the picture of that whole thing. We know the story, but do we really know how much trust that she put in God? Now, when she went back to the Lord, went back to the barrel, made the cake, brought it to the man, went back to fix one for her. Do you think the barrel was running over? I, I doesn't say the barrel was running over. May have still only been enough in that in that barrel for one cake. But when she went back, every time she went back to the barrel, uh, there was enough in it for one cake. Amen. Uh, and I promise you, the more that you do and the more that you give, uh, the more cakes you'll be able to bake. Amen. Uh, and that's what God is telling us to do, is to trust Him uh, in whatever it is He tells us. Even in the bad situations. Uh, even in the situations where we don't even understand. Uh, they don't even have to be in giving. Amen. This is just a roadmap for us to trust the Lord. Uh, 
our money is just one of the places if we can turn loose of that, uh, then we can trust to God with that. We can trust Him with the rest of our life. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever circumstance you have to face, uh, let me just tell you this, that God will help you uh, if you'll listen to His guidance. Uh, show Him the way. Let me just tell you something else. If, if something is telling you and you're feeling something uh, that don't do, in, to go in a direction that don't line up with this book, uh, you're listening to the wrong person. Amen. Uh, you're listening to the wrong spirit because uh, God's not going to take you in some new direction. Amen. Uh, he's not going to take you in something that don't line up with this old King James right here. Uh, he's going to take you down the right path. Uh, and that's why it's so important for us to get a grasp uh, and not only on our giving there, be in our full obedience unto the Lord. Uh, verse number 9 says this, As it is written, uh, He hath uh, dispersed abroad, uh, and He hath given to the poor. Uh, his righteousness remaineth forever. In other words, he's dispersed it out. He's, re he's, rely he's relating this back uh, uh, to a, a verse over in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter uh, 112, 9 says this. He dispersed, he's given to the poor. Uh, his righteousness is doing forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Uh, God just replenishes and rewards uh, as we are willing to give. Uh, and as he directs us to give, uh, God will replenish us. Uh, he uh, replenishes both. He replenishes and rewards both ways. Uh, he rewards the giver, and he also rewards the receiver. Uh, that one that is out there in need. There may come a time in your life when you need to be on the receiving end. Wouldn't you like to have been on the giving end uh, at some point in your life when you were able, uh, when you were needing to be receive, be the receiver? Uh, there's times in all of our lives when things are not exactly uh, going the way we would want them to go. But and it is great to know that there's God's people out there uh, and trusting Him uh, uh, that's willing to give. Uh, but here's another thing as well. When we do those things and we give the way God would have us to give and we follow the way God would have us to follow, uh, the next thing about that is this, that we are setting an example uh, for those that are around about us. Now, it's kind of, here's, a, here, here's a really bad thing that all of us can be guilty of uh, especially us uh, that have grandkids. We can be very guilty uh, of giving them all the things that they want, or at least all the things that we can afford. And we let them see us spend money at no end on those types of things, but never do anything, and we're tied as a bark on a tree when it comes to doing something to help somebody. That is one of the worst things that we can allow our children to see you know, because they'll grow up the same way. Amen? You know, what we need for them to see is, hey, there's, I'm not saying there's nothing, there's anything wrong you know, with spoiling your grandchildren. That's what they're here for. Amen? You know, at least that's what I figure they're here for. You know, it's for us to spoil. But they need to make sure, we need to make sure uh, that they see our obedience uh, and our willingness to give and to help others as well. They might grow up and be willing to help others the same in the same way. God. But God replenishes both time and time and ever. The Bible tells us there in verse number 9, it said His righteousness remaineth forever. In other words, we give for a while, but God gives forever. Amen? God gives on and on and on and on. Now, aren't you glad to know that His giving never runs out? His giving never stops. Verse number 10 says this, and now he uh, that uh, ministereth, uh, ministereth seed to the sower, uh, both minister bread for your food, uh, and multiply your seed sown, uh, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Uh, here's what I want you to realize about this verse right here. Not everybody go, is able to go out and to sow. Not everybody's able, and what I mean by that is, not everybody's able to go out into the mission field. That's right. Not everybody is able to go out and to reach others. But we are able to be able to provide some means for them to be doing that. 
we help support a couple of missionaries here at, at, at through Heaven and Light. We we help uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Jeff Bellamy, which goes into the prisons and goes into the schools, our youth prisons, and goes into schools. Uh, and teaches all kinds of character concept classes and all those things. And we get to read the letters of, of souls getting saved and works being done and things being spread. And you say, well, we only give a little. Yeah, we only give a little. But uh, that little helps to be able to go out and you still have a part in all of that ministry. We have another one by the name of Randy Santos, who's a, a missionary over in the Philippines. Uh, and we see some of those letters occasionally at of how they're going out and the work is taking on taking place over there and souls being saved and we have we have a hand in helping all those things become reality and all those things come and this is what he said in the book of Isaiah 55 verse 10 uh, he said for as the rain coming down and the snow from heaven uh, uh, the, and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud uh, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater uh, in other words the water comes down from heaven it don't go back up it don't return back up but it's able to give water to the and bread to the eater you know, and water to the soul and bread to the eater in other words the same way as when we give and we follow the will of the Lord and what God would has to have us to do uh, uh, then we're having part uh, in all of those things uh, you know uh, just like it's just like a lot of times uh, uh, we may not uh, we may not sow the seed or we may not farm the ground uh, but we put invest in that and we invest some money in that uh, and then we're able to reap the benefits of that Verse number eleven says this: being enriched in every uh, everything to all bountifulness, uh, which causes uh, through which causes through us thanksgiving to God. In other words, one might provide the seed, uh, one might provide the ground, one might provide this or that, uh, but we're all rewarders when God gives the increase, right? We're all rewarders when God gives the increase. When we see that thing happen, that little seed began to grow, and that little seed began to bloom, just like Bible camp coming up, you may not be able, we hope everybody can help. You may not be able to come out and to physically help it, but God gets, a, there's great reward because of it. Now we've been blessed the past, past few years, and I hope, that, I hope this year is even bigger than any of the years past. I hope we see more kids saved. We saw, I think, four, four or five, four or five the year before last, and six last year. And you know, I hope we see twenty-five. I, I, I mean, I hope we see thirty or fifty. I, I hope we see numbers once saved. But even if we don't, some point, someone will get to see and see the increase. Someone will see the increase of what happens through the ministry and the works that we do. We all have parts in that. that uh, the, the bountifulness of it. Verse number 12 says, For the administration of, the, of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, uh, but is abundant also by many uh, thanksgiving unto God. Uh, <coughs> the, giving of the, the, the giving of the saints is not a, a physical blessing, that, but, but it's what it does is it shows them uh, that how much God loves them. Uh, it shows the love of God through you to them. Amen. It let the, and he's talking about here in the, in the church. Of, uh, to, he's talking to the church of Corinth about the church of Macedonia and, and all the and the Jews that are up at Jerusalem. I tell you something I learned while I was studying this and a little bit that kind of helped me understand where Paul was coming from. We have to realize that a lot of these people that Paul was wanting this money to be able to go and to help were Jews that had traveled to Jerusalem and they were had maybe to be taxed or for some other reason they had traveled to Jerusalem. But while they were at Jerusalem, they heard the preachings of Peter and they were converted there to be Christians. Now, once they were there and they were converted to Christ, they had converted to Christianity, had received Jesus as their Savior, they very well could have had to have stayed there. 
they very well probably most likely had lost whatever jobs or farming or whatever it was that they had done in the past because they received Jesus as their Savior and now they were on a different path. Does that mean just because you get saved you got to change jobs? No, if God tells you to change jobs, change jobs. Amen. I'll tell you this much, you'll never be happy in a job where God don't want you. I, I, I found out the hard way in my life. If you're in a if you're in a place and you're miserable at your job, one of two things is going on. Now, either you're not where God wants you, or you're where God wants you. You just ain't doing what God wants you to do. Why you that? That's the way I feel, and that's the way I believe we ought to look at it. And we have to realize that these Jews that, that were up there, they were being heavily persecuted now at this time. I mean, just like they persecuted Christ and they were persecuting the Christians, they were per persecuting these Jews who had now been converted. And Paul wanted to go out and further the ministry that Peter had started in helping them up there. And he goes on. And, there, and he told them about the administration of the service and the supply to the saints in verse 12 and verse 13. He said this, Whilst by the, exper the experiment of this ministration, uh, they glorified God for, you, uh, for your uh, professed subjection under the gospel of Christ uh, and your, for your liberal distribution unto them uh, and to all men. Uh, so in other words, the collection that was being taken up down there uh, gave proof that the ministry uh, uh, and the, that God loves all his children uh, and that God will take care of his children uh, it was very proof within the pudding there uh, when they were able to take up that collection and be able to pass it out and be able to help those Jews that were in need. Uh, it was proof that God loved. Man, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, when, I mean, it amazes me how people, when God's people, uh, when it push comes to shove, how they will step up and do the right thing. Uh, obedience in this is, is evidence of a true uh, uh, a, a true conversion and a true Christian if we'll truly obey what God would have us to do. Verse 14, we're going to try to hurry up and finish up here. Uh, he said in verse 14, he said, by the, And by their prayer for you, uh, which long after you, for the, the exceeding grace of God in you. Uh, in other words, uh, here's what. If you give expecting something in return, then you didn't give. You invested, right? You bought something. You didn't give. He's talking here, and he said there, he said, by their prayer for you, which long after you, for exceeding grace of God in you, they saw the grace that was in the, in those Christians. They by, Through the free will giving of what they would have them to do, and that prayer from their heart, was a prayer uh, for the authentic, uh, for the real Christian, for that that was doing the right thing. These people prayed for them. I mean, look, let me just tell you this. Prayer, I desire the prayers of every child of God sure. because I know above all, prayer works, amen? And prayer is what we need daily. Prayer will help us. And they were praying for them, Chris. They said, look, you've invested this, you've done this, and now they are praying for you. And we'll get here in the last verse. And I mean, I could preach on this last verse for, for days. But he goes on here in verse number 15. He says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And I want you to think about this. And uh, here, here, the Bible tells us in verse 15, for his unspeakable gift. There is nothing greater to be able to give than Jesus. Now, sometimes we, I could preach on the gift that God gave us and, and His Son, and I, but I believe we tonight we realize just how much God gave for us. We we see that God gave His only begotten Son. God was willing to give His child up for us. God was willing to go no further than anybody else would ever go. You say, well, uh, he still lives. He does. But he was willing to allow him to die for you. He's willing to allow him to die for me. Unspeakable gift that God gave for us. So if the most important thing that we can share is Jesus. Right? Yeah. 
I think that's the most important unspeakable gift that we can share. Sometimes we share that by the free will of our heart in giving of tithes and offerings. That's what these two chapters were really about. Was letting others see Christ work through us. And if he can work through us in one of the things that we hold and cherish the most, our money, then the people that are out there can see just how much of the love of Christ is in us and how that Christ can make a difference in your life and how Christ can make a difference in their life. It's all about how much we let him be seen. Is every head bowed, every eye closed, every person playing, every heart searching? <coughs> we'll close right there. Listen, I hope that you're going and what God following the way that God would have you to follow. I hope you're exactly where the Lord would have you. But if you're not, tonight is a good opportunity for you to get up here and get on this altar and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Just let me follow the way you'd have me follow. Let me give the way you'd have me give. Most of all, let me shine the way you'd have me shine. I, that's all our heart's desire is tonight. We're not going to give a long invitation. I don't want you to ever be anyone for any reason. If you want to come on down, just come on down. She's going to finish up playing with this verse. So we're going Lord in prayer. I hope tonight that everybody's soul was satisfied. Anybody else want to come before we pray? Well, John, you pray for us. Precious Heavenly Father, I come to you, God. It's actually forgive me of my sins, God. Forgive me, Lord, I've come short. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, I'm going to come to you. God, I pray you would help us to be the light that you would have us to be in whatever fashion you want us to be. God, I know we're not always what we should be. We don't always act and talk and say the things we should. God, help us to be a better person, a better Christian. Touch them. Their passion, their father, grandfather, Lord. I pray God that you would just help us to be that everywhere we go. Help the church to grow. Help us to do what you would have us to do. Give all the glory. Yes. Lord, help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Yes. Help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Yes. Help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Yes. Help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Yes. Help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Yes. Help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Yes. Help us to be the church that you would have us to be. Hey. Amen. We appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or testimony on your heart before we close. Hearts and minds clear. Be much in prayer for those on the prayer list. Pray for all those on the uh, events that are coming up. Uh, and uh, just let us know. I think there's a sign up sheet in the back for the Carowinds Lane Sears getting ready to buy tickets if you have not signed up. Please go ahead and sign up for that if you're planning on going. And uh, we're going to try to get some group tickets. I think she's going to have that done in a couple of weeks. So be praying about all these things. We do appreciate you. Shake somebody's hand. Tell me love them. God bless you.